in this week's therapy tip of the week for psychotherapists in clinical practice. The tip of the week is how to use outcome monitoring tools, not as an assessment tool, but as a conversational tool. This idea of routine outcome monitoring or role has growing really big in the landscape of psychotherapy these days. And it's important because we're tracking about how people are doing. Research can be done about that and can evaluate the effectiveness of what we are doing in clinical practice, not just in clinical trials, but in actual naturalistic settings. However, if the tools are simply used as an evaluative tool, we just get the ratings and we put it aside, that really is not so useful. Instead, what we want to be able to do is to use that information and to be using that not as an assessment, but as a conversational tool to be able to talk about that. And why do we measure? The reason we measure is so that we could be as adaptive as quickly and efficiently as possible to where the person is at, to be able to take the pulse of where the person is at. It shouldn't be treated like an extra paperwork that you do and then you put it aside for some kind of funding or research purpose. No, instead, what you want to be using it for is to use it as a way to talk about, much like a physician who take a, takes a stethoscope and listens to the person's body and the physiology or the person's or the, the, the doctor who takes the blood pressure machine, they're not going to take the information and put it aside, right? They're going to take that and weave that. They're going to integrate that into the treatment itself. That's what we're trying to do to make it become part of the treatment. So, for example, if you are talking with a person and you start to administer some kind of outcome rating scale, in, in my case, I use a outcome rating scale since the 2004 called the ORS, right? And the outcome rating scale has got four components. It's got about the person's individual well-being, how they're feeling, on the sliding scale, which measures up to a zero to 10, and about the interpersonal relationship, about how they feel with people that are close in their life, and socially about things like uh, their friends and their work or their schooling and overall how they sit with it. And when they rate that, what you want to be able to use that is to clue in what they are telling you. Typical example, when someone comes in, especially if it's a youth who was asked to come into therapy under the behest of their parents, right? What might happen is that their scores of their well-being, even though there's some concerns by the parents, is much higher than you would have thought that they might be going through. And what you want to do is to take that as face value, right? And if the parents, if they come in, and I usually try to get uh, families and caregivers to come in, especially for the early stages of therapy, I too would administer this to the parents and I would want to get their point of view of how their child is doing. And I'm not going to privilege anybody's voice more than the other. In fact, I'm usually skewing more to give a voice to the voiceless, the person who's not so amplified in the process and usually is the child. And I want to make sure that we take those two views and to have a conversation about the difference. Most of the time, the scores are not aligned and the U scores are most of the time high. Of course, there are situations where they're not, but that's a useful starting platform because the differences is where each person gets curious about why they think so and why would you rate yourself higher or lower? And there are times where if the parents rate them as higher and the U's rated themselves as lower, this raises all kinds of questions for the parents. Like, really? I didn't know that you were really struggling so much with your friends. I thought things were doing well. The child might say, no, I just haven't told you, mom. Right? And that's a useful place to help to listen the person into speech, to create space to talk about stuff. So the tip of the week is use any kind of routine outcome measures as a conversational tool and less like an assessment tool. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this video channel on Frontiers of Psychotherapist Development and also 
we have a newsletter with five curated recommendations each week called the Frontiers Friday. The links below to subscribe so that you get straight to inbox ideas that you can apply for your professional development.